President Obama, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, has just authorized the CIA to assassinate an American citizen. That citizen is Anwar Alaki, a Muslim cleric born in New Mexico in the USA, but currently believed to be living in Yemen. Al-Alaki is regarded as the spiritual leader by jihadists and the Fort Hood shooter, and Alaki's speeches undeniably describe terrorists as martyrs who will enter paradise for their actions. However, he has not proven to have ordered any specific terrorist actions, and he has certainly not been convicted by any court of law. Nevertheless, he is now targeted for death by the United States government. The government of Yemen says it is unconvinced of his guilt and it does not plan to assist the U.S. in finding him, certainly doesn't plan to assist the U.S. in killing him. But doesn't the Constitution apply wherever the government goes? Isn't it still murder to shoot someone by the government without due process of law? My next guest, Kelly Vallejos, a former FoxNews.com reporter who now covers national security issues for the American Conservative Magazine, is as skeptical of all of this as I am. Kelly, welcome to Freedom Watch. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So why isn't there a, a public uproar in the media about this? I mean, this is about as unconstitutional, as violative of first principles as anything ever is, that the President of the United States could order the government of the United States to murder an American because of what he has said. Well, I think it's because the media hasn't shaped it in that exact narrative. The way it's been shaped is that um, this, uh, this suspected terrorist, Awaki, is um, a terrorist. He, there, it is not emphasized that he is American. Um, it is emphasized that he does have ties to the Fort Hood shooter, to the Christmas Day bomber, um, even ties, however tenuous, to the 9-11 hijackers. That's the narrative we hear. Um, it has not been emphasized that he is an American uh, citizen and afforded the due process in our Constitution um, and protection by the rule of law, uh, which makes this country so good and strong. Um, so I think it, the media, on the most part, has the mainstream media has fallen down on the job where it comes to this case. You know, we, the, the CIA has a history of political assassinations. We, we, we all think we know that. There's obviously no official sources, although from time to time, somebody's documents appear after they die and it sort of reinforces uh, those ideas. But I don't know of any history of actually murdering Americans. If, if the President of the United States can order this guy killed, no matter how evil he may be, where would this stop? Who would they order to be killed next? And what other parts of the Constitution will they cut out when it's inconvenient to their present purposes? Correct. Uh, and I say welcome to the short history of the global war on terror. Um, what I'm reading here is that uh, the 2002 authorization for the use of force against al-Qaeda is being used to justify the order to kill this guy. Um, and that justification has been used over and over again in the many, many flawed um, extrajudicial killings, detentions, um, high value interrogation, if you will, um, of terror suspects for the last decade. And as we know, there is a thicket of flawed and ruinous um, cases in terms of people uh, uh, being suspected of terrorism. And it turns out the government didn't have much of a case. Uh, we've let go scores of suspected terrorists from uh, Guantanamo Bay because their cases were so thin uh, that they were picked up on the battlefield um, on, on very flimsy uh, evidence, uh, people turning them in out of vendettas. So we have people in Gitmo that have been languishing there right. and do not, we do not have a case uh, for them because the, the evidence is so thin. So now we're going to um, uh, talk about killing uh, our American citizens abroad um, when we don't know what kind of evidence we have against this guy. For all we know, it could be as flimsy as all those cases of the, over the last decade, and we're, that's very troublesome. We're chatting with uh, Kelly Vallejos from the American Conservative Magazine. You know, there's only one crime that's actually defined in the Constitution, and it's treason. And treason consists of providing aid and comfort to the enemy or waging war against the United States. 
and it provides that anybody charged with treason is entitled to a trial, and there have to be at least two witnesses to the same overt act. There's nothing anywhere remotely as specific about any other crime in the Constitution. Why? Because the King of England used to charge people with treason simply because they disagreed with him. And the framers wanted to assure that in the United States of America, people were free to speak their own mind and take their own behavior. And if the government thought they were treasonous, they'd get a trial. So even if this al-Alaki is what the government says he is, even if he has done what the government says he has done, even if people have reacted to his words and ideas as the government says they they have reacted under the Constitution itself, as well as under laws written pursuant to the Constitution, he's entitled to a trial before a neutral jury and a neutral judge, and the government has to produce evidence against him before it can harm a hair on his head. Does that make sense? It, it certainly does. Um, but as we've seen over the course of the last decade, uh, we've been ceding our, those rights that you just spoke of under the name of the global war on terror. I mean, right now, I could be, I could be dragged in and detained as an enemy combatant under the current Military Commissions Act. Um, I could get, um, I could, I, I am afforded the habeas rights, but there's a bill that's been introduced by uh, Senator John McCain that would take away those rights, that would uh, allow the government to detain me without trial indefinitely um, because of whatever evidence that they have that I have been even a material um, uh, aider of, of a terrorist group. So I think that, again, the media has fallen down because time over time we've seen that Americans' rights, Americans' rights have been ceded under the global war on terror. And we've been asked to trust the president, trust the executive, whether it be George Bush or now President Obama, that he has gathered the proper evidence that he's going after the bad guys. Um, but like you said, there are, there are laws, there are precedents. And in terms of treason, um, a, a trial be afforded. Now we're being asked to just um, hand over uh, the rights of the CIA to go after an American citizen, not knowing what the legal standards are or what the evidence is against this guy. And like you said, he could be a very unsavory character, but he's still an American. And um, we don't want the slippery slope where tomorrow we, go, we wake up and um, further rights are seated and they're going after Americans here on a domestic soil for aiding or uh, providing cover so-called for terrorism. Kelly Vallejos, thanks for joining us.